Vite is now the default module bundler within any new Laravel projects that you create. It replaces what Laravel Mix and Webpack used to do and processes any assets that need to be compiled to something the browser can understand. The main benefit of using Vite is its speed with incredibly fast server starts and hot module replacement. So let's go over some common things you've probably done using Mix and see how we can do them in Vite. So I have a blank Laravel app here and also another Laravel app behind it which uses Mix. So let's take a look at the Vite example. You can see we now have this Vite config.js where all of our configuration goes. So if you need to configure any plugins for any assets you need to compile, you can put them in here. You can see that we are making use of the Laravel plugin here and the entry points are currently app.css and app.js. So if we go to our Mix app, this is similar to our Webpack Mix.js. You can see we're processing JavaScript here with app.js and the output is within the public.js folder. And for our CSS, we are using Tailwind here. The input is within resources, CSS, app, CSS, and the output is in public CSS. So back to our Vite app. Let's also take a look at our package JSON. You can see we only have two scripts now. We have one for dev and one for build. And we'll take a look at both options here. For our dev dependencies, we also have our Laravel Vite plugin and also Vite. So again, no more Webpack or Mix, but you're still free to use them as an external package. Let's also take a look at our entry points, which is resources. We have one for CSS and JS. I believe the CSS one is empty for now, and it is. And our JS is just importing the bootstrap file, which is right here. And it's pretty much the same as what we had before. So let's take a look at the old bootstrap file. And the main difference here is we are now forced to use the ESM imports. You can see in the old one, we're using the require syntax, but in Vite, we have to make use of ESM imports. So we can't use require within Vite. So you can see we are using import here and also for lodash here. Okay, let's see how we can process some CSS. Let's start with Tailwind here. So let me just close these for now. And I believe the Tailwind docs have updated for Laravel Vite. So let's go to that. So let's go ahead and install Tailwind along with post CSS and all prefixer. Okay, let's go ahead and initialize our Tailwind config along with our postcss.config.js with this command here. Okay, we have to add this content array so it knows where to find classes. So let's add this within our Tailwind config. Tailwind config.js and let's replace our content array here. Okay, next is to add our Tailwind directives to our CSS file. So let's grab this. Remember, this is our entry point. So that should be our app CSS. Let's paste that in. Let's save that. And that should be it. Whenever we run our Vite server with npm run dev, Tailwind should be watching for classes that it needs to process. And we also have to make sure to add the Vite directive. So you can see within our blade layout here, we have to add this Vite directive, which also points to our endpoints. Actually, let's go into the Laravel docs for this. So let's look for that Vite directive. And you can see these are the same entry points as defined in our Vite config. So in this case, our entry points are app CSS and also app JS. So let's go ahead and add that in our, and in this case, let's work with the welcome blade. And I'm just gonna remove all of this since we're installing Tailwind. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of the body and just re-add that. And it's a BG blue 700 and text white. Hello, Vite. And let's go ahead and add that Vite directive right here. So again, if you're used to Mix, you can think of this as just importing the outputted CSS. So let's go back to our Mix project here. The configuration is within our Webpack Mix.js. So for CSS, we're saying process the app CSS, which is our entry point in Vite as well. And then the output should go in public CSS. And then within our Welcome Blade, we just import it the normal way. So in this case, I'm just using a link tag and pointing to this file within the public folder. So you can sort of think of this as this in Vite, but it's not exactly the same. So let's see if this works first. So let's save this. Now we can run our Vite server. So we can say npm run dev. And now we have our Vite server running at localhost 3000. And this is the server that Vite uses to process your assets. It's not the same as your actual application server. So you still have to run your app server as you normally would. And in this case, I'm using Laravel Valet. So let's take a look at that in the browser. I have it open here. Let's refresh. And you can see Tailwind is working here. 
Now, like I said earlier, one of Vite's best features is its fast hot module replacement. Now, unfortunately, out of the box, it doesn't support blade hot module replacement, so we have to add that manually. So what I mean by that is if we change our blade files, then it won't reload automatically. So let's say changed here. Let's save that. You'll see that the change is not there yet until we refresh manually. So if you take a look at this blog post by Freik, then you can see how we can do that. Pretty simple. We just have to add this within our Vite config. So it's saying watch for blade files and whenever it updates, do a page reload. So let's grab this. Let's put it within our Vite config. So vite.config.js. We can put it after the Laravel plugin. So let's paste that in. And let's see if we get reloads as we update our blade files. So let's go back to our welcome blade. Let's say changed again. Let's save and let's see if the change is here. And it's not. We might have to restart our server here. So let me just restart this. Let's try that one more time. So let's update this again, again. Let's save. Let's go back here. That still doesn't seem to be working. Let me do a hard reload here with Shift Command R. Let's try that one more time. Again, 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 save. And now it's working. So yeah, just make sure to do a hard reload. Let's try that one more time. Let me just remove all of these, save, and it does work, cool. And this is obviously beneficial if you're making use of Tailwind as you want the updates to change as we change our classes here. Cool. What if you wanted to use a CSS preprocessor like SAS? We can do that as well. So if you go into the actual Vite docs, you can see that it does have built-in support for SAS, LESS, and Stylus, but we just have to install the preprocessor using Node. So in this case, we'll try SAS here. Let's stop this, run this to install SAS. Let's run our server again. And now let's change our entry point here. Let's make a new one called app.sas. And how about we make an H1 here so we can test it out. Hello, SAS or SCSS. And we'll target that in SAS. Actually, let me wrap this in a span as well, so we can test out nesting. Okay, let's change this to app.sas or scss. Let's go to our CSS folder and add that. So our resources, CSS app, scss. Let's say our h1 is going to be color red, and let's nest the span in here, and let's make that green. So now our entry point is the SAS file, and let's see if Vite handles that as well. So back to our app. Again, we might have to do a hard reload here, so let me try that out. And it does work. Let's double check the hot module replacement. Let's change this to purple. And it does work, cool. So like me, you might be confused as to which file you have to change for our entry points. So you can see we changed the one within our Vite directive here. And if you're in dev, this is the one you have to change. But whenever you build for production, we have to make sure to change this one as well. So right now we're not building for production. That's why this still worked because it didn't read these files here. But generally speaking, you do want them to be the same. But I'm not going to keep that change with the SAS, so I'll just leave it to what it is here. So let's put that back to app.css. And now that should be back to the Tailwind defaults. And now we're back to using Tailwind here. Now let's take a look at how we can process our JavaScript. So again, the entry point is app.js, which is right here. And we do have this bootstrap file, which is importing things like lodash and setting up axios here. But let's see if we can do some other things. So just to make sure this is working, let's alert something here. And let's see if that shows, and it does. And how about we just import another package here, which is something you'll commonly do. So I do have date FNS open here. Let's go ahead and install this. So let me stop this, install this, and we'll try it out with this example here. And the output should be three days ago. So let's just paste that into our code here. Let's alert this as well and see if it works. Save that. Let's make sure to run our server again. And let's see if that shows in the browser. And we might have to reload here. And it does work, cool. Let's double check the hot module replacement. So let's change this to four, and that should be four days ago. And it does work, cool. Now what about TypeScript support? TypeScript should be supported right out of the box without any configuration. 
So how about we add a TypeScript file here? So let's say test TS for TypeScript. Let me just paste a function here, which we're exporting. You can see it's just a greeting with some TypeScript here. And all it does is output the argument. So let's save that. Let's go ahead and import that from within our app JS. So we can import that here. Let's say import greeting is the function name from, and it's in the same folder, dot test. And how about we just alert greeting Andre. Okay, save that. And there it is. Cool. And if you wanted to, I believe you can just change the extension of our JavaScript entry point. So in this case, our app JS, if we just change that to TS, that should work as well. So we do have to change the entry point as well within welcome blade. So TS, hopefully that still works. And it looks like it does. Cool. Let me just hard refresh to make sure. And everything is fine. I'm just going to change it back to normal JavaScript. Now let's take a look at how we can make use of view if we want to drop in view components to our blade files. So for this, we need to install the VJS plugin view. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's stop this npm install, say minus D, vite plugin view, and I believe this will install view as well. Let's take a look at our package JSON. And I guess it doesn't install view. Maybe it will later, I'm not sure. So let's go ahead and set up a view component. So how about we make a new one called example component. So we'll say components, example component dot view. And I'm just going to paste in some code here we have from our mix project. So we have an example component, and it is making use of view three here. So let's grab this. Let's go back to our Vite project, let's paste that in. And let's go back to our entry point of app.js and set up view here. So again, the setup is similar to how you would do it in mix. So I am going to grab that as well. Let me just comment this out. Let's say view in it. Let's go back to the other project. Let's go back to our entry point within here. And we are grabbing create app from view. So we'll grab that as well. And also importing the example component. So let's grab this Go back to our V project. Let's put that here. And let's also grab the initialization here. So we're using create app. We're specifying what components we want to use, and then we're mounting it to a div with an ID of app. So we have to add this in our blade component, the div with an ID of app, which we'll do back to our V project. Let's put that down here. Let's save that. Let's go back to our welcome blade. Let's wrap this with a div with an ID of app. Okay, save that. Is my server running? It's not. Let's do npm run dev. And if I set that up correctly, if we use the example component here, hopefully that should render in our browser. So let's set it up like this. Okay, let's save that. Let's check out our browser. And of course, I forgot to actually set up the plugin within our Vit config. So let's go ahead and do that. So that should be in our documentation. We have to import view here. So this will be within our Vit config. Let's paste that import up here for plugin view. And we have to call it within the plugins array. So let's grab all of this. And let's paste that in our Vite config. So we'll put it after Laravel. Let's get rid of all of these comments here. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's give that one more try. So back to our browser, back to here. Let's hard refresh. And now we are getting a blank screen. If you take a look at DevTools, you'll see that it's saying to use a different version of view. So it's saying to use this version to make it work with components within our blade views. So instead of importing view from or create app from view, let's import it from here instead. And let's see if that works. Let's save that. Let's take a look at our browser again. And there is our view single file component. So again, this should have support for hot module replacement. So if you go back to our example component, let's just change the template here. That should reload automatically. Cool. And of course, if you want, you can pass props to it as well. So let's add some props here. I'm just going to paste it in underneath here. Let's accept a prop named name and let's use it up here. So I'll change this to the prop and to pass it in. Let's go ahead and go to our welcome blade. 
and let's pass in a name here. Name equals Andre. Try that out. And it does work. Cool. And if you wanted to use React in a similar way, you can make use of the React plugin. You just have to make sure to add this Vite React Refresh directive in order for it to work correctly. So I'll just do this behind the scenes as the process is very similar to Vue. Okay, so I installed the React component. You can see it here. It is a counter. And in this case, I did have to install React and React DOM as a dependency. So if you take a look at package JSON, we do have React and React DOM and also the plugin React from VJS. Within our welcome blade, here is the React component. We're passing in a prop using data attributes here. You can see the example React component here. Again, just a simple counter and also making use of props. You can see our entry point for setting up React within app.js. Again, we're importing React and React DOM, also the React component. Down here, we're setting up props, and then we're using React DOM to render that component. And within our Vite config, we're importing the plugin from React and just calling it as a method here. And just to make sure hot module replacement works for React as well, let's change this. Let's go back to our browser. And it does work. So yeah, those are some common examples of how you would process some of your assets using the official Laravel Vite plugin. Now, when you're ready for production, you can stop your server here and we can run the npm run build command. Again, make sure that your entry points are correct within the Vite config right here in the Laravel array. And then it should generate all of your necessary files for production within the public folder. So let's try that out. You can see it made a public build folder. And now if our dev server is not working, it will make use of the production assets. So if we try this again, it should still work. But now it's making use of the public assets. So if you take a look at the public folder within here, you can see public build and all of our assets in here. Now, if you ask me if you should migrate your project over from Mix and the Webpack to the official Vite plugin, I think it's worth doing if you're doing common things like using Tailwind CSS, maybe using a CSS preprocessor like Less or SAS, maybe Post CSS. And for your JavaScript, maybe you're doing something simple like just importing NPM packages, dropping in some view components or some React components. Now, if you're making more advanced use of Webpack and maybe importing a bunch of plugins, then you're going to have to do your research and see if there's a Vite equivalent. The Vite ecosystem has grown rapidly over the last few years, so there is a good chance that there may be an equivalent Vite plugin. Now, in my opinion, the best use case for using Vite over Webpack and Mix is when you're using Inertia and you have a lot of JavaScript files to compile. Webpack doesn't really handle the compilation process as efficiently as Vite does. And if you have a lot of pages and JavaScript components to compile, then you'll definitely start to see slow compile times as you build your app. Now with Vite, this process is highly efficient, so your compile times remain really quick. So if you want to try out Inertia with Vue Laravel in Vite, try out the Breeze scaffolding, which installs everything for you and already has all of the Vite config set up. So I do have an example here. So again, if you take a look at the entry point, we have our app.js. You can see Inertia is being set up as it usually is. But if you take a look at our Vite config, you'll see that we only have one entry point here because our CSS is being imported within JavaScript. And it should be the same for our Vite directive, which should be in our app blade PHP. And it is right here. So yeah, definitely try out Vite as it's now the default module bundler in new Laravel projects moving forward.